Hello everybody and welcome back to Leo's Animal Planet. While I was working on my rhino video, someone called Cleve Hicks gave me this um, book called Rhino to the Rescue. I read this book and this book was great and I really liked it and it's about conservation. No spoilers, okay? It's about animal survival and conservation and that's what I love about the book. All of the pictures are hand painted, so that's really cool. Look at this picture. Do you like the artwork? I love it. Especially this picture. It's really awesome. And we follow Ernest Horningway. He lives in England, which is where I live in actually, London. Uh, well, Puddington, basically. Get it, Puddington? Ernest Horningway went to Kenya to save his cousins and learns how to charge um like this ooh, ooh. it's really cool and as we read through the book we see that three types of animals are struggling like sharks rhinos and elephants so it's a real book about conservation and also there's a page that has like a shark poster so my fin is not for your soup it's really cool now let me talk to you about dr cleave dr cleave is a famous scientist and he looks at the behavior of great apes like chimpanzees and gorillas he has made many discoveries in chimpanzees' behaviour and culture. We have a special guest today and I'm so honoured to welcome Cleve Hicks to Leo's Animal Planet. Woo! Hello Dr Cleve, thanks for so much for coming to Leo's Animal Planet. Um, you travel to many places and it's a real honour to have you here with us. My first question is about your experience. You have learned about animals all your life. How did it feel um, when you met the animals in real life? Hey Leo, Th thanks so much for having me here to talk about the book and uh a great question yeah after having read about chimpanzees and gorillas uh, you know so much in college to when i finally got the opportunity to be walking down a trail in the in the forests of central african republic and hearing to one side gorillas going puck 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 and across the river i heard chimps going whoa 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 and and tree drumming on the trees it was absolutely a, a magical moment and then only a few days later i actually met the chimps and gorillas themselves and uh, there's, there's just nothing quite as exciting as, as, as an encounter with these uh, close relatives of ours in the forest. And they study you, they look into your eyes and study you just like you're studying them. I remember one time too, waking up in a tent uh, with a chorus of, of uh, 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 drums around me. The drums made by the gorillas on their chest, buka, 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 buka. the drums made by the chimps on the trees, and then not too far away, the, the more regular even space drums, the doom, the doom, the doom, the doom, and they were, those were by the local people. And so uh, together I was hearing three different hominid species making a drum chorus in the early morning. It's just, just very magical. Well, I read your book about Rido to the Rescue. I loved it so much. How did you come up with the idea of the book in the first place? Oh, that's a great question and really glad you love, you love the book. Um, the, I'll, I'll give you, I'll tell you a secret. Actually, Ernest Horningway is kind of my uh, other self. Uh, he kind of represents my own journey where I, many years ago, went into the forests of Africa to meet my closest cousins, chimpanzees, gorillas, and, uh, and when I found them, I fell in love with them, and then I realized what, what we're doing to them what we humans are doing to our closest cousins, which is cutting down their forests and destroying their homes. So I'm trying to do everything I can these days to get the message out for our forest cousins. Well, that's what uh, Ernest Horningway did as well. He left his cozy home in England, in Puddington, England, and uh, flew to Africa and met and learned something from his free-living rhino cousins, uh, you know, uh, learned how to charge, learned how to be a wild rhino, and then 
he tried to do everything he could to help them back. And that's what I would like to do, is do what Ernest has done, which is to kind of be a voice for the wild rhinos. When did you start writing this book? I started to write the book, to answer that question, about 10 years ago after my last mission to, to Congo. I came back and I felt very frustrated to look around me and see how, the, how we're messing up the world we have, this beautiful world we have. We're cutting it down for wood, we're, we're uh, poisoning the rivers and streams, we're killing the wild animals, and I felt frustrated and hopeless. So what I thought I would do is write this book to just um, express my, my, my feelings about this and, and actually paint another world, literally paint another world where, where someone is doing something to, to stop this. Um, and uh, in the end, uh, that, that was the origin of the thing. I, I was just doodling some pictures in a, in a notebook and came up with this rhino, big clumsy rhino, a little big and clumsy like me, with a top hat and a cravat. And I thought, why don't we take this guy to Africa and have him meet Wilhelmina and the other wild rhino clan. That was awesome. I love that Ernest has a different culture than his cousins. Has he, have you ever seen anything like that in any other animal? Yes, exactly. And in fact, that's one of the main uh, elements of, of my research studies is looking at cultural differences between different groups of chimpanzees. It used to be thought that only humans have culture. And culture we know as um, behavior that, uh, for instance, something you learn from your parents or your friends that then you teach to someone else. And that way these behaviors, they, they keep going down through the generations. And we found out that chimpanzees and gorillas and bonobos um, have something like human culture as well. For instance, in one area of Africa, uh, the chimpanzees will use a certain kind of tool to get insects. Uh, but in another part of Africa, uh, chimpanzees will ignore those insects. They won't use any tools to get them at all, but instead they will use a stone to hammer open a nut. That's and that's a very simple cultures, but um, th this is actually what I study. And what's really exciting is we're finding uh, culture is not limited to humans or our great ape cousins, but also orcas, killer whales seem to have it, uh, some species of birds, uh, the songs they sing seem to have a social right. learning component. Um, so it seems like animal cultures are widespread in the natural world and uh, we're only scratching the surface in, in terms of uh, non-human cultural diversity. Do you think education is important for um, conservation? Absolutely and one of the, the things I'm proudest of is that Together with some supporters, we managed to get a, a, a bunch of these uh, copies of the Rhino to the Rescue to uh, conservation educators in South Africa who are actually working to protect wild rhinos. That's interesting. And we'll talk about them a bit later. But um, it was really special to get pictures back from Africa of little children reading Rhino uh, Ernest's story. And, uh, you know, the hope is that if we have enough of these stories that are, are teaching children um, the value of wild animals, not as something to eat or something to have as a trophy on the wall, but as, as these, these magical, special, wonderful beings that are, that are sharing the planet with us that, that cool. will, uh, you know, I think children actually have an, a natural inclination to see wildlife That's that way, true. but it's, it's sort of hammered out of them as they grow up. But with stories like Ernest's story and others, uh, you know, what I'm hoping, Charlotte's Web was one I read as a kid, a for book. instance. Um, uh, the Lorax is another great one by Dr. Seuss. That these stories will help to, to, to strengthen that natural inclination that children all over the world have to, to want to be friends with our fellow beings around the, uh, on the <laughs> earth and not eat them. I didn't want to eat them anyway. No. Okay, cool. You're donating part of the money that you got from selling the books to the black members. Can you tell us about them? Um, as a, as a reacher, researcher, my goal is to try and share with the world the natural the, the, the data and scientific information on the, on the animals and plants that live in, in these regions. But it's the rangers themselves, uh, whether in Africa or in South America or all over the world, they are every day putting their lives on the line to yeah, protect true. and save this wildlife. I've been lucky enough to work with some of these folks in Congo, the Institute Congolais pour la conservation de nature. That's the Congolese Institute for Protecting Nature and they're very true. brave people. Um, and and I, I really wanted this book to have some kind of impact on 
their ability to do their work in the field. And I'm very impressed with this uh, group in um, South Africa in the Kruger National Park called the Black Mambas, young women uh, who uh, go out and, and patrol the, this incredible natural park and protect and save, uh, uh, yeah, report back amazing. on poaching incidents in the park and really put their lives on the line to protect these rhinos. And so, uh, and others, and other wildlife species. So I really wanted part of my, um, uh, the proceeds of this book to go to them, to help them. You can look up their website, uh, the, Black Ma uh, the Black Mambas, and also their affiliated group, the Bush Babies, uh, which no, is uh, education for kids in the area. And they're really worth supporting. Yeah, um, and of course, with your, if you, when you buy this book, you support them, but you can also make a donation directly to them. And uh, they're, they're really, uh, I'm proud to be able to, uh, play some part in helping them to protect these these wild this wildlife pretty cool do you think you uh, technology has a key role to protecting animals because like the black members were using cameras to um see if animal if there are any poachers trying to kill some animals so i'm a researcher at the department of artes liberales at the university of warsaw and recently we had a field project that was really great because um you know, you want to be very careful getting getting close to wildlife, and especially great apes, chimpanzees, because they they can get sick from the same illnesses we we have, and we can give it to them, and that can lead to disaster. So we actually ha had uh, local field assistants put out camera traps that were able to capture lots of details of the wildlife behavior, and also human intrusions, hunters, and things like this, without us having actually having to be there. Um, so you're taking remote videos of, of all the wildlife. You're getting so much information. And uh, yeah, I think this is a, a big part of the, f the future for primate research, is to, to put out these remote traps. A camera trap. Mm -hmm traps the image of the animal as it walks by on its little forest trail doing its daily business and it could be a chimpanzee carrying a tool in its mouth or a forest buffalo or an elephant but basically it triggers a little laser in this uh, robot camera that, that, that the local assistants have put out and captures the image of, of these of these beautiful creatures as they walk by and you don't even have to be there and you don't put them at risk by being there. Do you think that helps? Absolutely, and I worked with some researchers in, in Germany in a Max Planck Institute who have turned it into a real science to be able to use camera traps to count the species of animals living in an area. So you don't actually have to you know, send someone there and put them at risk and, and intrude into Ooh. the forest. You can just remotely record these animals passing by the cameras. Um, there's, a, there's a project called Chimpanzee you should check out on this, uh, and the PANAF project has also um, used this kind of methodology to help us to count animals and also look at poaching levels um, uh, without actually having to be there. And that can actually help rangers a lot too, because they can just, instead of actually having to go out into the forest, um, some places of the forest are very remote and hard to get to, they can just use these remote technologies. Drones can also be used to film overhead and see if you can count, say, a, a great ape nest, for instance. That's really cool. Oh, absolutely. Finally, do you have any more plans to release more books about animals in the future? Absolutely, and you know, to let you in on a little secret, the, the sequel to A Rhino to the Rescue, A Rhino Returns, is already written. The only thing is I need some time to, uh, you know, in between research trips, to paint this book, and that takes some yeah, time. Yeah, that will. But, um, and the theme of this book will be, again to let you in on some new information, will be on trophy hunters. Ernest goes on an undercover mission with Sar uh, Ogoro Sartorius yeah. to uh, break, uh, put, a, put an end to trophy hunting. So I'll, I'll leave that hanging there and uh, look, forward for, uh, look forward to future developments. Okay. Um, I loved your book, Cleve, and also I loved you coming with us on Leo's Animal Planet. I am so honored to have you on my channel. Thank you so much, Leo, for having me on. I uh, really love the energy of your show, and it's really inspiring to me that um, you know, you're a voice of the ne new generation speaking out for rhinos and, and sharks and, and all sorts of beautiful creatures around the world. Yeah. And it really does me good. really good to know that the, the future is in good hands with, with, with kids like you. So thanks for having me on to talk about the book and, uh, and, and the conservation situation. Really enjoyed it. Oh well, thank you so much. Bye, Cleve. And by the way, 
You can buy it on Amazon and any other websites that sell his book. But when you, you buy, buy the book, you will um, pay money to the Black Numbers and the Rhino. So, and also, I love you guys. Every like and subscribe makes me feel really nice. So, if you would do that, please do it. I love you guys. Happy World Rhino Day 2021, guys. Bye.